Hi everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. Well, this is a very exciting day because today is the first canning video of the 2024 harvest season. Now today we are gonna be canning something that's exciting and very easy and I would consider kind of a super beginner canning process and canning recipe. Today we're canning blackberries. Now here in Missouri, in Southern Missouri, at least there are a ton of wild blackberries and we have several locations on our property that have amazing blackberries. This year they actually started ripening about two weeks earlier than normal. They are normally ripe around uh, 4th of July, but we have been picking them for a couple weeks now actually. So Kevin and I decided we have enough blackberries in the freezer. Now we can start preserving them through the canning process. So just yesterday, Kevin and I went out to our wild blackberry bushes and picked one gallon of blackberries. Now that will get us several pints of canned blackberries. I'm so excited to share this very quick and easy process with you. Let's get started. Now here in front of me are the four quarts of blackberries that we picked yesterday. All four of them are exactly the same. Now we picked them, put them in these containers and then they went straight in the refrigerator because wild blackberries, and really blackberries in general, uh, they need to be refrigerated because they don't last long. Uh, that's one of the reasons why you don't find many of them in the grocery store um, and that's why they're also very expensive. So these blackberries, um, they need to be washed uh, because you know, we didn't have a chance to do that when we came back in. Plus they store better in the refrigerator before they've went, been washed. So our first part of the process is to wash all of these wild blackberries in some cold water. Now I'm just going to show you the way that I like to wash off blackberries. You can really just spray them off in a strainer or something like that. You can fill up your whole sink and wash them that way. I just like to wash them in uh, just another a bowl. I use my little sprayer here and just kind of be a little vigorous with the sprayer. Really what we're going to be getting off are any like leaves that are stuck on there, any bugs, um, any yucky juice that is kind of dried on there. Uh, these are wild blackberries like I said so there's no, there's no like pesticide or, or anything sprayed on them. I'm just going to kind of agitate these a little bit and allow any of the debris to kind of settle on the top. I'm going to start pouring this off and hopefully not lose many berries uh, in the meantime. I'm going to do this a couple of times until the water um, seems a little bit more clear. Now that I rinsed these three times, I'm just going to um, put them in a strainer so that all that extra liquid, all that extra water can drain out. I'm just going to do the same thing with the rest of these and then we can move on to canning the blackberries. Now that the berries are washed and strained, I'm just going to dump them all into a big sauce pot. Now that we have all of our fruit washed and strained out and in the pot. I just want to talk with you a little bit about canning fruit without sugar. We're actually going to be canning this fruit with just water, which is very, it's really unusual in the whole canning world to can fruit in just water. Now, typically what happens is that people can fruit in a simple syrup, a, a sugar syrup, which can have as much as like a 50% sugar, 50% water syrup. But these days people are wanting to move away from sugar either all together or they're wanting to find another alternative like honey or stevia or something like that. Now I want to tell you that we are going to be canning today with just water rather than honey or anything else because Kevin and I are living a keto lifestyle. So we reduce as much of the carbs as we possibly can and we're eating no added sugar. Now some berries are very low in carbohydrates including blackberries. So we do eat quite a few blackberries on the homestead 
even though we're eating a ketogenic diet. Diet. I kind of predict that there will be some people who are really hesitant to can just in water because our grandmas and our great grandmas and maybe even our great great grandmas all canned fruit in some kind of sugar syrup, whether that's a heavy sugar syrup or a, an ultra light sugar syrup but today we're going to be doing it in just water. Now I want to let you know that in my canning book, not my canning book, but in the canning book that I love the most and refer to all the time, it says specifically that it is safe to can fruit in just water. Now I love this um, ball, complete book of home preserving, and I've had this for um, many years. So there's a new version of this. You can find one like this in our Amazon shop. But in the fabulous fruits section, it says that canning liquids that contain sugar help fruit hold its plump shape and maintains its bright color and delicious flavor. But if you're watching your sugar and caloric intake, unsweetened juice or water are safe alternatives. So I don't want you to think that what I'm doing is something that is like against the rules in the whole canning culture. It's not against the rules to can fruit in just water. It also says that while fruit is usually packed in a sugar syrup, like we talked about, fruit juices such as unsweetened apple, pineapple, or white grape juice, or juice from the fruit itself, can make good packing liquids. Unsweetened fruit juice provides flavor without additional sugar. Water may also be used, although it will yield a less flavorful result. When canned without the addition of sugar, fruit will be less flavorful, have a dull color, and won't hold its shape as well. If you're preserving fruits using fruit juice or water, use the same amount of juice or water as you would syrup, but you must use the hot pack method of canning with fruit. Okay, so I'm saying those things to let you know that I'm not doing anything wrong by not canning fruit in a sugar syrup. We're doing something that's perfectly fine and approved. We're just going to use water. Now we're sacrificing, like it said in here, color, plumpness, and maybe flavor without having the sugar, but in the long run, we're gonna be getting something that is more conducive to the way that we are eating. And it may be conducive to the way you're eating as well. Now, I wanna call your attention again to this book, and in this section, fabulous fruit section, there's a section that I was reading from called Fruits in Syrup, and it gives a nice table here um, to show you the proportion of sugar to water, if that's what you would like to do, is to use a sugar syrup. But it also talks about if you want to substitute honey for the sugar, it gives you the right proportions here as well. So this has been a fabulous book for me for a really long time. Like I said, there's a newer version and you can check this out in our Amazon shop. I'm, I refer to this all the time when canning a lot of my recipes. So on to the actual canning process for canning wild blackberries in just water. Now over here on the stove, I have my canning pot full of water and I have the heat on, it's getting hot. I also have another pot that's full of just plain water that I'm gonna turn on. We want to get this boiling. We're gonna be back filling with this water instead of the sugar syrup. And here I have the berries that we need to get heated up. I just need to add enough water to these berries where when I put them on the heat and start heating them up, the berries aren't gonna stick to the bottom. So I am figuring that I'm putting about two cups of water on the bottom. We're gonna put this on the stove top. We're gonna turn it on to a medium to medium high heat. We're gonna listen for it to boil and then we're gonna start stirring it occasionally to heat up all of the berries so that they're all heated through. Now I'm hearing a little bit of sizzling on the bottom of the pan. So I'm just gonna go ahead and gently start stirring this. I'm trying hard not to uh, be very aggressive with the berries. 
because I don't want them to burst or split or anything like this. We're only really doing this to warm up the berries. My pot of water over here is almost boiling. My, my canning pot already came to a boil, so I actually put my canning jars inside of there to heat up. We are gonna be filling the jars with really pretty hot liquid and berries. So we wanna make sure that the jars themselves are hot as well. So that the difference between the cold glass on the jars and the hot berries and hot water doesn't make the glass break because of the difference in temperature. So we're gonna let the jars hang out in here until just before we're ready to can these berries. Okay, we are getting very close to canning these blackberries. So before we get started, I want to just tell you a couple things. Number one, even though this is a very easy and kind of beginner canning video and canning process, I encourage you to go back to the very beginning of my canning playlist because I have kind of a beginner how to can with water bath canning video where we can grape jelly together, which really is a fantastic um, video and recipe to start with if you've never canned before. But I recommend that you also get kind of a beginner canning book uh, like this one that I recommended before, just so you can review um, and have some really kind of fabulous, approved, safe, canning recipes to use. So pretty soon we're gonna bring all of this over and get started canning. I just wanna go over with you a few things that we're gonna be using today in the canning process. Now we are actually today gonna to be using two different ladles, one for the berries and one for the um, boiling water. You could use one, I just felt like this would be easier um, for me. We're gonna be using a canning funnel, a jar lifter, we have clean, um, new canning lids that we're going to be using. I'm using Ball brand, but you guys, lots of brands out there these days that are very good. I have uh, my clean jar rings, a moist clean towel, um, a measuring tool, I call it a gapper, and I have something to stir it around with. I use a chopstick, and I do have my canning book here just for reference just to make me feel a little bit safer because even though I've been canning for probably 12 years now, sometimes I just need my security blanket over here to refer to. Okay, let's bring everything over, actually starting with the canning jars. Remember they're in my canning pot here, warming up. We're gonna dump out the water and bring them over here. I'm gonna give the berries one last stir before we get started. I'm also going to add um, a couple glugs, <laughs> I know that's very precise, a couple glugs of white vinegar to my canning water. That will just keep um, the jars themselves clean from having any like hard water deposits cling to the outside. It's not a safety issue, it's just kind of an aesthetics thing. I like to add vinegar so that when I take out the jars, they're nice and clean and pretty. Okay, let's start getting the berries and the boiling water onto the counter and start canning. There are the berries. Here is the boiling water. Now reminding you that the process that we're doing right now is a hot pack canning method because we are starting with hot fruit. That is required for if you're using only water instead of a sugar syrup. We could have done raw pack where we added raw fruit to all of the jars ahead of time, but in that process you use a sugar syrup. So that's why we're doing the hot process. Now we are going to start with a hot jar and we're going to use a canning funnel. We're going to take these berries and backfill the berries into the jar. I am getting some of the liquid because some of the fruits have released their juices into the water and I feel that we will get some really nice flavor if we capture the juices that have spilled out into the water that we use to heat them up. Okay, 
Because of that, because there is so much juice in there, we may end up not even needing to backfill with the boiling water that we have here because there's quite a bit of liquid within these berries. Okay, so I have it filled up to about a half inch from the top of the jar. I'm going to remove the canning funnel. I'm gonna take my stir stick here and I'm gonna poke around in there to remove any of the air bubbles that are down inside the jar. Then I'm gonna use my measuring tool and at the half inch mark, I'm going to measure and make sure that there is no more than one half inch of space between the top of the jar and the top of the liquid. Liquid. I do have a tiny bit, so I'm just gonna backfill with another bit of liquid and one berry and check again. That is perfect. So we have enough head space on that first jar. So I'm gonna take my clean, damp cloth and I'm going to wipe the rim of the jar because we don't want any liquid or debris on the top of the jar that's gonna prevent the lid from adhering and creating a suction and seal to the top of the jar. That is what is going to keep all of your food products inside your jar safe. I'm gonna add a canning ring, twist it on there and twist it on what's considered finger tight. Not super tight, but a little bit tight. I'm gonna use my canning tongs here, my jar lifter, and I'm gonna bring it over here and put it in my canning pot. That jar is just gonna hang out there while we put the rest of the fruit into the jars and into the canning pot. Take some of the berries and fill up the jar up to a half inch to the top of the jar. We're gonna backfill with enough of this liquid so that the liquid also comes up to a half an inch from the top of the jar. We're going to remove any air bubbles. Check to make sure that there is a half inch of head space. There is, it's perfect. Now we're going to wipe off the rim of the jar. Put on a lid and a ring. Put it on their finger tight. And now this can go in the canning pot. Now that those jars are in the canning pot, I just need to continue the same process over and over until all of the berries are in jars and then we can start processing them. Okay, this is the last jar of blackberries going into our water bath canner. One gallon of the blackberries yielded six pints of blackberries canned. Now my canner, which right now is my big stock pot here, would hold eight jars, but we only have six in here. So in order to keep the jars kind of stabilized, I'm actually going to fill the empty spaces with empty jars that I didn't need. I'm gonna do that just by using a tongs, putting them in here like this, filling them with water. And they'll really just be placeholders so that while the water is boiling inside of there, it doesn't tip any of the jars over. There we go. Now, I wanna make sure that we have at least one inch of water above the tops of the jars. I'm gonna check that by using the measuring tool that I used over there in the canning process to make sure that it's at least one inch above. And it looks like it's about an inch and a half above, so I'm feeling confident about the amount of water that's in here. So we have all of our jars in there and the empty spaces are stabilized by empty jars. I'm gonna put the lid on my pot here and I'm gonna turn on the heat. I am gonna turn it on high. Now we're gonna be processing these jars for 20 minutes for either pints or quarts. Now there is a little bit of change for me because of my elevation, 
my elevation is above 1,000 feet above sea level, and because of that, I need to increase the processing time by five minutes. So I will be processing these for 25 minutes. Now the processing time does not start until the water inside of here starts to boil. Once it boils, I can set my timer, let this process for 25 minutes, and then I will turn the heat off. Take off the lid and let it sit there and everything calm down for about five minutes before taking them out of the canning pot and moving them to the counter. Well, the timer went off and I was able to take out the jars of blackberries one by one. They looked so beautiful coming out of the canner. Now you can see that I have put them on a towel on the counter so that there's not a lot of temperature difference between the cold counter and the hot jars. Again, that is to prevent the jars from possibly cracking because of the temperature difference. Now these jars need to stay on the counter for a minimum of 12 hours. It would be best to be overnight or 24 hours just to make sure everything cools down and that there is a proper seal. Now, as the jars cool down, you will start hearing popping sounds when the jar lid suctions down properly onto the jar rim. That is the sound of success for a canner. That means that your jar has successfully sealed and once it's cooled down, you can remove the ring, wipe down your jar, label it, and put it on your shelf. Now I want to remind you that this is a great alternative to canning berries with sugar syrups. Canning fruit with just water is a really wonderful opportunity for people who are watching their carbs or watching their sugar to still go through the canning process and enjoy the fruit. Now, I want to let you know that as of now, there are no canning recipes that are approved for using sugar substitutes even including stevia. But by canning fruit in water, when you open it up, then you can add whatever sugar substitutes you would like and use it within your favorite recipes. So you guys, I hope you enjoyed spending some time with me today in the kitchen, learning how to can fruit in water with no sugar. If you're enjoying videos like this, make sure that you hit the subscribe button below. And remember, the best way to help us here on the homestead is just to share our videos. We would surely appreciate it. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless.